What's up everybody? This is Professor Ken here, Cinema 9-1. I thought we would start with microphones. So right now what you're hearing is the microphone that is built into the camera that is using to make this video, known as the internal microphone. I might sound a little far away. Um, I might sound normal. Um, but as you will soon find out, you never, ever, ever want to use your camera microphone. It might sound okay right now, but once you hear these other microphones, when we go back to this, it's going to sound like crap. The first thing I'd like you to do is to just listen, and I will do this with you. What you're going to hear is noise in the room. This is what built-in camera microphones are notorious for, picking up just everything in the room, whether you want it or not. So I want you to just sit, maybe shut your eyes, and listen. There's a refrigerator about two feet away from the camera that might be making a noise. There, are, uh, there is a clock or two on the wall with a really loud ticker that is definitely making a noise. So let's just listen to see if you can hear it. Oh, we also have neighbors upstairs, too. So now uh, my trusty wife is going to turn on some YouTube static. So I have a YouTube video that's playing across the room that's 10 hours of television static noise. So let's see if we can hear that. So as a good sound person, you definitely want to make sure all the stuff is turned off or curtailed in some way, if not completely, before you start shooting. Now, what you're going to find out is you can't control everything all the time. So that is where microphone selection comes in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch off the camera microphone and we're going to start playing with the different microphones that you should have in your hands right now for your assignments. Let's see how a lavalier microphone does in this situation. So this is the lavalier mic that a lot of you have. This is the Shure SM93. Most lavalier, so what this is, this is the actual capsule that uh, basically houses the XLR port and connects to the lavalier microphone itself. The actual lavalier microphone itself, as you can see, is barely, uh, it's about the same size as my pinky fingernail, maybe a little bit less, and there's a little clip that you use to clip to your shirt. Now, as we've learned, <clears throat> lavalier microphones sound best when they are clipped at around chest level. Ideally, the lavalier microphone should be about this distance from your mouth. Some lavalier microphones can be hidden in hats or as uh, was demonstrated in class the other day in someone's hair. It can also be taped to the underside of somebody's collar. Um, but generally lavalier microphones are used with news anchors or with actors where it is hidden underneath the clothing like so and then they tape it to the inside of the clothing somewhere around chest level. Why? Why? Well, remember the proximity effect. When it's too close to the mouth, the, the low frequencies get very exaggerated. And if it's too far away, it just sounds far away. Chest level is the nice, perfect medium. Okay, I am going to, in the interest of time, <clears throat> and just ease, I'm going to just, I'm not going to try to hide the cable, I'm just going to clip it to my shirt about right here, and I'm going to turn on the mic. Okay, listen to the neighbors and the noise, and now listen to the neighbors and the noise through the lavalier mic. It should be quite less. Now listen to the quality of my voice. Compare it to the quality of my voice to the other mics. 
if you compare this to the handheld mic, here is the handheld mic. One, two, three, one, two, three. This is the lavalier mic, lavalier mic, one, two, three, one, two, three. The lavalier mic might sound a little richer. Lavalier mics and, um, and shotgun mics vary in quality pretty greatly. Um, but lavalier mics, in my opinion, even more so. This lavalier mic, in my opinion, is a very good lavalier mic as far as quality and frequency response goes. Some of you might have different lavalier mics, such as this one. This is a wireless lavalier mic that some of you have. This is an amazing microphone, but compared to a wired lavalier microphone, it actually lacks just a touch in the frequency response department. It might not be quite as rich on the low end as this one. And that has to do a lot with the fact that it is a wireless microphone and some of that low end gets lost through the wireless transmission. It's very negligible, but it is there. So let's see what the wireless microphone sounds like. So for those who are using the wireless mic, you'll notice that one will say R for receiver and one will say T for transmitter. So you will receive the wireless signal so that, and that is what plugs into the audio recorder. It is receiving the signal and that is what is being recorded. So this is the box that you want to plug your XLR cable into. Now this is an XLR to mini cable, M-I-N-I. -I. You might recognize, some people call this just a headphone jack cable because this is what your most standard sort of consumer headphone jack looks like. It's also known as a 1 8 inch plug, a mini plug, also known as, uh, I believe, a 3.5 millimeter plug, um, but uh, I like just to call it mini. So we screw that in there. And so you have the receiver box with the XLR on the other end. And then there's a little door right here that opens up. You just sort of put your hands on there like that and open it, see that? open and then there's the on off button right here all I do is hold it for about two or three seconds and then it turns on as you can see by the lit screen there's another button over here only go into this if you uh, read the manuals which are online in uh, the Google Drive page otherwise you really don't want to mess with this other button because that goes into frequency settings so then you plug this into your recorder And the transmitter here, this is going to transmit the microphone. So this is the microphone. As you can see, this right here is the microphone itself, also about the size of the pinky fingernail. This will plug into the transmitter box at the top, also a mini plug. Door opens up. Turns on the same way, you hit this button for about two or three seconds. These turn off the same way too. That same button that turns it on also turns it off. And I will now clip this to my shirt. Now, this is the sound of the wireless lavalier. Let's listen to see if we can hear the refrigerator, clock, the crazy party upstairs, or the TV static. Compare that to the um, in-camera microphone. Compare that to the handheld microphone. One, two, three, one, two, three. Back to the lavalier. Here is the lavalier once again. And... Let's bring out our old friend, the boot, the uh, shotgun microphone, part of the boom mic kit. So here is the wireless lavalier. And here is the shotgun mic.
One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. How's it going, everybody? Shotgun Mike. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. How's it going, everybody? Lavalier Mike. This is one of the main things for you to get dialed in as a sound mixer and sound recordist. Walk into a room, survey the scene. What sort of noises are there? What sort of noises can you fix and or get rid of? That clock, I could just take it off the wall. That refrigerator, I could unplug it. That static, I could just turn off the TV. Boom, those three things are taken care of. So if the party does continue upstairs, I need to make sure that the micro came in. So in this situation, the party upstairs is some noise that I cannot control. Then I am going to have to choose the microphone that is best for this situation. Slobalier tends to be good for uh, being very local. This is an omnidirectional mic. It might pick up some of the refrigerator noise and some of the clock noise if I'm too close to it, but if I'm far enough away from the sources of the noise, it's pretty much just gonna get what is in its omnidirectional circle. And it doesn't really go too far because it is a pretty tiny microphone. The dynamic mic, the person is going to have to hold the microphone. So if it's a scene where that's what the character is, perfect, you're all good to go. Because this microphone is not gonna pick up any noise outside of its cardioid pattern. The directional microphone or the shotgun is going to work great if you could figure out how to get rid of the noise that is in the areas where the microphone pickup patterns will be picking up sound, which would be directly in front and directly behind. These microphones tend to sound really good, especially if you have a good quality one like a Sennheiser. Shotgun microphones tend to have the most natural sounding response out of all the microphones because they pick up a little bit of the room with the human voice. So if, for example, we're in a living room, it'll sound like a living room. If you're in a bathroom, it'll sound like a bathroom. This microphone, it's great as far as ignoring all of the background noise, but it might not sound as realistic because it is not able to pick up all that noise. The lavalier, kind of in the middle. It picks up a little more of the background noise than the handheld, but not as much as the shotgun. However, it doesn't sound quite as natural as the shotgun. See, each microphone has pros and cons. There is no perfect microphone. So you just have to survey the scene and determine what works best for you.